Behind me is the shop. Below me is the machine room. In order for my custom fixture table to be practical for my workflow, it has to have dimensions larger than the one thing that's stopping me from using it in both places. This door. Here is how this build went down. Season five. Usually the first question that comes out of people's mouths is why does your table have a bunch of holes in it? And then when they find out the answer is because it's a fixture table, the next question tends to be what is a fixture table? Well, very simply put, a fixture table is nothing more than a surface with a bunch of mounting locations or points that will help facilitate putting something together or welding it or building it. And while there is a very technical definition to that, that's about as close as I'm going to get with it. Now, it doesn't have to be an actual table. It can be something simple like a crummy welding fixture plate. Not necessarily a table by design, but it definitely has a bunch of points that will facilitate mounting something to it, making it a little bit easier to weld or holding it in place while you do it. Think of it more like a universal jig or a universal fixture. You add whatever you need to add into it to make it hold whatever you need to do for that job. When that job is done, we erase it, completely clear it, and voila, set it all up again to do another job. There's nothing really common about fixture tables other than the fact that they have a bunch of holes and they all pretty much serve the same purpose. So you don't really have to worry about copying or finding somebody else's, but they do have a few things about them that are very typical, such as the size of the hole, which is usually either 5 8 or a 16 millimeter, which means that diameter of that hole will facilitate holding a pin or something else similar to it like a clamp or a bolt or a stop or anything else like that that is of that diameter. The other thing that you normally find is the distance between the two of them. It's very common to see something with two inch on center. That means the distance from the center of one hole to the center of another one, either parallel or perpendicular to it, is going to be two inches away from the other one. That's pretty common too and that's the design of my table but that's pretty much where it ends. Aside from needing it to go in and out of that door, I also have a few other key features that I wanted to put into my table. There's nothing really typical about results on a plasma cutter. Some are absolutely better than others, but you got to find out what your tolerance is and what it actually uh, produces before you go ripping apart a sheet. That's why it's a good idea to have some samples cut. These samples came off of my plasma cutter and it's basically considered as is. So if I go through here and I hold it up here, I look at it, I check all of my clearances, my tabs, the slots, everything else that goes with it, I can find out if this will actually work in its complete finished condition and then I can go out and rip a sheet apart. If it doesn't work, I just go through and adjust the cat a little bit and say, hey, I need a little bit more clearance here, a little bit less there, and so on. Now, once you have all of that solidified and your design is good, it's just time to start cutting at that point. So let's get on that.
318 holes cleaned up on both sides. Sometimes I wish it was a laser, but man, am I really impressed with how this fast cut actually cut all these holes out. Like the tolerances that I was able to maintain and how clean every one of them, it's like perfect. I love it. But now we have a problem. 3 16 material as it sits right now is not like the most stable anti-warpy type of uh, thickness that you would normally go for. Uh, it'll do for a lot, quite a bit actually, but we do have to kind of make sure that it uh, resists the, uh, the urge or the uh, ability to uh, warp, distort, or move around. So that's why we have some slats that we're going to add on to here, which will effectively increase the thickness and uh, fight distortion. Now they were strategically positioned because you notice I have a big giant hole in the middle of here, which I will show you guys later, but now it's time to get all of these lined up. I have a ridiculously tight tolerance on them as well just because I knew I could get it and I don't want it to be like super loose anyway. So there's going to be some clamping. There's going to be some uh, making sure that everything lines up beautifully and I'm going to take my time in getting these on here. Why is there a big giant hole in the middle of my table? Well, that's actually a really good question. And even on the last table that I built, that was the uh, uh, cheap DIY fab table video that we did. Uh, you remember I had some removable sections and some adjustable slats and stuff like that. This is pretty much the same concept. Basically speaking, if I need to feed something through the table uh, to get into position or it's kind of an awkward uh, you know, piece or something like that that I'm working on, I can simply just take this out, feed it through the table, and I don't have to worry about repositioning or anything else like that. It just, it just makes it a little bit easier. The other thing, uh, I'm gonna add some sheet metal to this uh, very soon and we'll uh, attach it all on there. So if I flip it over, I now have a tray for tools, parts, whatever I need. So that's why I have this section here in the middle of my table, removable. Moving on. There's only so much work that I can do with the tools that I have on hand. And there's only so much accuracy that I can achieve with those tools. And there's only so much time in the day that I can actually do this to work on it and all the rest of that good stuff. So I have to outsource. Today, I'm at Precision Tube Laser. They're gonna do the job that I need to get done with the accuracy and precision in a fraction of the time. <laughs> so busy there's always something happening here what would you do with this if you could fit it inside of your garage Yeah? Yeah. 
seriously, that's only 20 seconds. Only 20 seconds. <laughs> that's a... Whoa! Dude, I want to put a baseball bat on that. <laughs> What's that? It knock it right out of the park. <laughs> <laughs> Can it go any faster? That's as fast as it goes. Oh. That's it, time is money. Time is money, and while I would love to show you guys exactly what this million dollar machine can do, my parts are on deck and I have to get back to work. But if you want to see more about it, let me know in the comments. I'll make another video all about Precision Tube. in Vegas. Hey, bet oh. me a hand. One hand? I win. It's free. All right. Yeah? No, I'm good with that. You got a dollar? No. You got a dollar? I, I got, it doesn't take cards. It should. Yeah, I know. You should. <laughs> oh, man. Coins. We need coins. coins. You, there's coins. no coin slot. We'll make one. We'll just stick we'll it in We'll make one? Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> look at this. Look at this fit up here. Look at this. Just snap like right into place this is totally awesome the guys at precision completely killed it i love it but i've decided the first project that i'm going to do on this one is going to be putting all these legs and all that stuff together so i got to get this thing sanded down prepped up and ready and then we'll put everything together because i mean it's a fixture table right we'll start using it before it's even done Cuts are just so perfect that I can just sandwich that piece of aluminum in there. That is so sweet looking. Not to mention, we got a tray. I can put stuff in it. <laughs> I'm loving this thing. So I was getting a little ahead of myself there and primarily because I wanted to find out whether or not I was going to MIG or TIG weld these. The answer is MIG. Now the reason why, when you cut something like a reactive metal or just about any metal for that matter with uh, something that's not a shielding gas, like in this case these were cut with oxygen to drive the price down uh, instead of nitrogen. Nitrogen would have shielded it and left it very able and clean, ready to be welded with a TIG for example. But since these were done with oxygen, got to use the MIG. So, uh, I just switched to the MIG, put a big old fat gnarly bevel on it, cleaned and brightened every single surface that's going to be welded, and we're just going to blast all of these together. The beauty of these laser cut parts, they literally just fit face to face perfectly, like just beautifully fit there. So we can quite literally just set them up, no need to worry about who's super hardcore fixturing or anything like that. We just need to line them up, blast some tacks on them, and beat the crap out of them with the weld to make sure that it goes all the way through. I got to land on it, a little bit of a face, but heavy on the welds. Then, you know, maybe we'll take a couple of things. Another thing I have to think about is my order of operations or my order of welds that I have to do here, because this uh, sleeve right here, this is a receiver tubing and it just slides over so that way we can make our table adjustable. These detents, these locking detents, these will open up or you know, close, do the whole works. We're gonna blast those on there and then once we start moving it around and everything lines up to its hole, they just lock into place. This makes the table foldable and movable so I can get it in and out of the door like I need to do. So these will also get blasted on there pretty heavy. But all of these joints, you gotta make sure that you get the right order going in here because if we uh, put all of this together right now without the sleeve on, we would not be able to get it on there. So gotta make sure we pay attention to that. I'm just gonna blast through all this real quick, get it all lined up, beautifully fit, and we'll get going.
All right, so there's a couple of things that we need to pay attention to on this one. Because <laughs> these things are heavy and we're gonna weld the crap out of them. So we gotta make sure that uh, whatever it is that we do on here, it's gonna be done right the first time. So have the tubes already assembled just for the sake of saying that I did that. Notice the location of, of our pins where they're at. I wanna make sure that they're both on the same side and that will be the inside of the table. So when we get this all set up here, I'm literally just gonna tack it with the short circuit settings that we have on here just to get it in place and i mean the fit is just so perfect on this one that it's kind of hard to screw up so as long as both pins same side we'll just tack it in place real quick so that they don't move and then once i have both of them tacked up and good we'll uh, change our settings over and set it up for spray transfer because this is one seriously heavy duty uh, weld that I want on here all the way to the table sitting on this sucker. So we gotta make sure that it's on there nice and tight. Now all of the Synergic settings on the Fronius Trans Steel, this is the 2700, the really big one. Um, it's really simple. You just tell it what you're welding or the thickness of what you're welding and it does the rest. So at this uh, voltage and uh, wire feed speed, which is 460 inches a minute, 25 and a half volts, it's gonna be on full on spray transfer, which means it's gonna burn like super hardcore right up into that metal, right where I want it. Okay, table on the floor, obviously, legs in place where they need to be. I do have to cut up some spacers here to make sure that they sit in the same place where they're supposed to be, but I need to have all of this together so I can measure all of it out. Now, this beefy, super hardcore table leg set up here will essentially fold. So I have a heim joint that I'm gonna put on this uh, end over here. And then uh, when we pull the pin, see if I can do this by hand here, there we go. When I pull the pin, that sleeve will slide down. This whole assembly folds up and then that means the tabletop will fold up and we can get it through that door. So let's take some measurements here, just kind of get all this stuff set up here, do some more uh, cutting and putting together. And then of course, uh, once it's all said and done, we got to put in a piece of tube or something there in the middle to connect all of it. Then we can slap the wheels on, call this thing done because I got a big job that's coming up that's going to need this table for. Thanks for watching.